everyone, welcome to Doing Dental School. My name is Kajal Khatri and I'm a senior at Marquette University and I just got into dental school, which is really, really exciting. I created this platform just to create sort of a virtual mentorship where pre-dental students, dental students, all other professional students really can help each other achieve our goals together. So if you want to stick around, make sure you subscribe down below and also follow me on Instagram and TikTok, which are both linked down below as well. All right, so today we are talking all about what it means to be a pre-dental student. I know when I first decided that I wanted to become a dentist and I kind of discovered the world of dentistry, I was kind of lost. I didn't really know like what being a pre-dent was. I didn't know, you know, is it a major? What classes do you take? Um, what extracurriculars do you have to take? What are the exams and tests you have to take? So I thought I would just kind of create a comprehensive video where I kind of go over everything and give you a really broad overview of what being a pre-dental student really means. All right, so first things first, I'm kind of just going to go over what being a dentist means and what you're really working towards. And I know this kind of sounds like really basic, really low level, but I think it's really helpful to understand exactly what you're getting yourself into because dentists really do a lot more than kind of what we think, especially as pre-dental students. You know, usually pre-dents are pretty good at taking care of their teeth. We brush twice a day, we floss, we use mouthwash, and so, you know, we don't really see the whole scope of what dentists do. So I kind of just wanted to go over and just list some things and responsibilities of dentists. So the first thing is that dentists are oral healthcare providers. That means that they kind of work with a really broad range of patient population. The second thing that dentists can do is prevent, treat, and diagnose gum and dental diseases and injuries. So again, there's a really broad range of what they can do because they're working with gums and teeth and also preventing, diagnosing, and treating. So there's a really wide range of what they can do. The next thing to keep in mind is that dentists can perform and interpret diagnostic tests. So for example, this could be an x-ray or a radiograph where dentists can see beyond what's just visible to the eye to interpret and diagnose different diseases or conditions within the oral cavity. The next thing to keep in mind is that dentists are often business owners. So you don't have to be a business owner to be a dentist. You can work as an associate or within a corporate office. However, many dentists work within a private practice and many of them own their private practice. And this means that they run the behind the scenes and the business aspect of their practice as well. Many dentists will hire like a practice manager or a business manager, but many of them do this on their own. So this would be kind of up to you on how you would want to run your practice in the future. The last thing I want to mention within being a dentist is that there are specialties and many people are probably aware of the specialties, especially if you've gone to a pediatric dentist or if you've had braces before, but there are a lot of other specialties that we kind of don't think about all the time and sometimes you don't even know exist. So I kind of just wanted to read off the list of what the 11 different specialties are according to the ADA and I'll also have them linked down below. But the first one is dental anesthesia. There's also dental public health and endodontics. Then there's oral and maxillofacial pathology, oral and maxillofacial surgery, oral medicine, orofacial pain, orthodontics, pediatric dentistry, periodontics, and prosthodontics. So those are the 11 different specialties according to the ADA, and I kind of just wanted to list them off to make sure that you're familiarized and you know what the specialties are. All right, so now moving on to what does it actually mean to be pre-dental? So most universities do not have a pre-dental major. It's usually a track or a course of study. So for example, for me, Marquette University does not have a pre-dental major. You major in something else on the pre-dental track. So I majored in psychology, but on the pre-dental track. And the pre-dental track just means that the resources and guidance that you need to get into dental school are brought to you. So they might have a 
academic advisor that's specific to pre-health students where they'll make sure that you're getting all of your prereqs in and you're taking the right courses and that you are involved in extracurriculars as well. This also might include different opportunities that your university has. So say if there's a dentist or a doctor that's coming in and giving a lecture, maybe they'll send an email to you saying, hey, if you wanna look at this and if you wanna to go to this lecture, you should go, it would be really helpful for you. Or, hey, the Writing Center at our university is doing a session on personal statement, so if you're applying this year, you should go. So some of these resources that maybe you don't know of will come to you when you're on the pre-dental track to make sure that you're prepared and equipped to apply to dental school. All right, now let's talk about majors. So there's no specific major that you have to be to be a pre-demo student. You can truly major in anything, and I want to really reiterate that because you're gonna be a competitive applicant no matter what. So choose a major that you're genuinely interested in because you don't wanna spend four years of your life doing something that you hate. That being said, a lot of pre-dental students do choose to major in one of the sciences, so that being biology, chemistry, physics, biochem, you know, that type of stuff. And the reason behind this is because a lot of the prerequisite courses for dental school, which I'll explain what the prerequisite courses are in a second, but a lot of those prerequisite courses are already integrated within those majors. So for example, to be a chemistry major, you have to take general chemistry, you have to take organic chemistry, which which are two of the prerequisites that are required for dental school. So that's kind of the reason behind why most pre-dental students do choose to major in one of the sciences. All of that being said though, as I said, make sure you major in something that you genuinely love. For me, I actually started as a biomed major, but I kind of wanted to switch it up and I knew that I really had a passion for the behavioral sciences and psychology and that's why I chose to change my major to psychology. It was a little harder to get my prereqs in, I will say that because a lot of the prerequisite courses just didn't count towards anything in my major, like organic chemistry does not help me in psychology, but I still had to take it because I wanted to go to dental school. But through talking to my academic advisor, and through talking to my pre-health advisor, I was able to make sure that I was getting all of my prerequisite courses in while getting all of the requirements for my major in as well. So now let's move on to talking about prerequisite courses and the classes that you need to take in order to become a pre-dental student. So I looked on the ADA website and they actually suggest that you take five courses, five general courses that will usually be prerequisites at all dental schools. And those five courses are eight credit hours of biology, eight credit hours of chemistry, eight credit hours of organic chemistry, eight credit hours of English, and eight credit hours of physics. So that's a really general basis of what the prerequisite courses are. All of that being said, all schools are different and all schools have different requirements. So what my suggestion would be is go onto the website of a dental school or a few dental schools that you might be interested in applying to. And if you don't know where you're gonna apply, I would say just start with whatever dental school is in your home state. So for me, I kind of based all of my courses around what Marquette University's School of Dentistry prerequisite courses were, because that is the dental school that's in my home state. So I looked and I noticed that on their website, they actually require biochem. And so I made sure to actually take biochem in my undergraduate career to ensure that I had all of the prerequisite courses done. Some schools will also require anatomy, microbiology, physiology. Um, you know, there's a really wide range of some of the prereqs that could be there. So make sure you look on the website of some of the dental schools that you're interested in to make sure that you're getting all of those prerequisite courses in. Also remember that you don't have to take all your prerequisite courses before you apply. You can take prerequisite courses after you apply and after you get in even. So just keep that in mind, but be careful with it because you don't want to leave all of your prerequisite courses until your last year because that doesn't really give dental schools a good basis of where you are on their prerequisite courses. The next thing that's important to know as a pre-dental student is what the DAT is or the dental admissions test. 
So this test is really similar to any other entrance exam that you would take, such as like the ACT, SAT, LSAT, MCAT. It's the entrance exam that you have to take in order to get into dental school. The DAT is scored from one to 30. So one being the worst score that you can possibly get and 30 being the best score you could possibly get. Most schools do have a 17 minimum. So, and this, again, it varies school to school, but most schools within the United States require at least a 17 within each category in order to matriculate through the application process. There are four sections on the DAT. So there's a natural sciences section, a perceptual ability section, reading comprehension, and quantitative reasoning. So natural sciences actually includes three different sections. It includes biology, chemistry, and organic chemistry. The next section is perceptual ability. So this is being able to visualize things within your mind. And this is how dental schools test this. The reason that you need to be able to visualize within your mind is a lot of dentistry is actually visual, visualization and being able to change images within your mind. So for example, when a dentist looks into your mouth, they might be looking in a mirror. That means that the dentist has to remember that this is a mirror image and they have to flip it within their brain. How they test this on the DAT is through this perceptual ability section, where, for example, they might take a piece of paper on the screen, they'll fold it up, and they'll punch one or two holes in there, and then they'll unfold it, and you have to choose where the holes are going to be. So there are six different sections within the perceptual ability section, six different categories, that they'll kind of test your perceptual ability through. The third section of the DAT is reading comprehension. This is really similar to the ACT or the SAT where they'll give you a section of reading and then they'll ask you a set of questions about the reading. And then the last part is quantitative reasoning, which is the math section. All right, so after listening to all of the sections that are in the DAT, you might be wondering how long the DAT is. And it usually takes about five hours to complete the exam. And currently right now it costs $495 to take the exam. Make sure you keep up to date on the website though, because this number can change in the future. I'm pretty sure it's changed since I took the DAT as well, but it's just important to take the exam because it is required for every single school in the United States. All right, so now we're gonna move on to what experiences you need in order to get into dental school. So I like to categorize my experiences within dental related and non-dental related experiences. So dental related experiences are really, really important because they show your passion for the profession to dental schools. You are really just making a lifelong commitment here by applying to dental school because you are committing to the profession for life. And so they want to make sure that you know what you're about to get yourself into. And so you can do this and you can show dental schools how passionate you are through having experiences within the dental field. And this could include a lot of things. This could be dental shadowing. So just shadowing a dentist. This could be service within the dental profession. So going and volunteering at a local clinic or maybe going abroad and doing a mission trip within dentistry. This could also be dental assisting. So working within the dental profession and this could also be just like working at a dental clinic as well. Now there are also non-dental related experiences and this is important because it shows dental schools that you have passions outside of dentistry as well. You kind of need to show them that you're a real person and you're not just a robot who only does school and dentistry and that's it. Like you wanna have a personality, you wanna make sure that you're able to connect with patients on a different level aside from dentistry. And you can do this by having non-dental related experiences. So now I kind of just wanted to take a moment and talk about what actually is dental school. I've been mentioning it all throughout this video, but I haven't actually like explained what dental school is. So dental school is four years long and there are two different equal degrees that you can get. So you can get a DDS, which is a doctor of dental surgery. And then there's a DMD, which is a doctor of dental medicine. They're equal degrees. You don't, there's no like benefit to having one or the other. It just depends on what school you go to and what type of degree they offer. Those two degrees, the DDS and the DMD, only allow you to be a general dentist. So, you know, those four years of dental school allow you to become a general dentist. And then if you want to specialize beyond that, 
you do have to do additional education. And this might include a residency or maybe just another program um, of education that you have to apply to. So this can really just depend on what specialty you choose. But just remember that four years of dental school allow you to become a general dentist. And then if you wanna specialize, it is more education beyond that. All right, now let's talk about money. Of course, all of our favorite topic. Dental school, I will tell you, is expensive. The application is expensive, the DAT is expensive, and actually attending dental school is also expensive. So as I already said, taking the DAT is $495. You will also end up paying a little bit of money for maybe some prep courses that you might choose to take. The next thing that you would need to pay for is applications. So your first application that you turn in is $251. Then after that, each additional application that you send to a school is $108. And again, these numbers can change. I will have the IDEA website linked down below. So just make sure you check that out to ensure that these numbers are correct for whatever year that you are applying to dental school. Part of the application process is also supplemental fees. So once you turn in your initial application, most schools will come back to you and have a supplemental application that you fill out on their website. And of course, there is a fee for them. This can range anywhere from maybe like $25 to like 100 or maybe even more than $100. So again, it's important to make sure you're saving up money because those supplemental fees can really add up. The next cost that's part of the application process is interviewing. So personally, I didn't really have to pay for interviews because I did all my interviews during COVID, so all of them were virtual. But part of interviewing is actually traveling to the school, making sure that you have somewhere to stay. So obviously there are travel fees, there are hotel or maybe Airbnb fees, and then you also have to pay for food. So that's something to take into consideration as part of the application process as well. And lastly, the last fee that's part of the application process is a deposit. You need to give a deposit to the school that you're accepted to in order to reserve your spot in the class. These deposits can range anywhere from $500 to $2,000. So it really just depends, but it's important to have that money saved up in order to reserve your spot within the dental class. All right, now let's talk about cost of attendance, so tuition. Most students do take a loan for their tuition because it is a lot of money, but there are a few scholarships, including military scholarships, where you can apply for them and see if you can get some of your tuition or all of your tuition covered by a scholarship. However, it is important to remember that scholarships, especially at the graduate level or for dental students, are very hard to come by and they're very far and few between. But it is possible, so make sure you look into that because it is a really good option. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about is what does dental school look like? Obviously, I don't really know because I am not a dental student yet. I will be starting in August. But from all of the research that I've done, you spend your first two years doing a lot of your didactic courses. So this is a lot of going to lectures and going into the simulation lab and practicing on like fake patients. So this is a lot of just your learning stages and making sure that you have all of the knowledge to equip you to then go to your third and fourth year where you do a lot of clinical experiences. So this is working on real patients and actually working towards becoming a dentist. Obviously during your first two years you do have some clinical experiences and during your third and fourth year you do have some lectures that you attend as well. So it is a little bit mixed but this is kind of like the main like your first two years your main focus is your didactic work and your third and fourth year your main focus is your clinical work. But of course, I am not a dental student yet. So if you wanna follow along my dental school journey and you wanna kind of keep learning about what dental school is like and more about pre the pre-dental journey, make sure you follow along here by subscribing down below and also follow me on Instagram and TikTok. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.